Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafel, and I'm now joined by a 2015 NFL Draft prospect, a defensive tackle, nose tackle, out of uh, Southern Connecticut State University. He's considered a sleeper in this year's draft, but it seems like as we get closer and closer to draft day, uh, his stock has been really rising. Uh, he's Carleef Taylor. Now, Carleef, I really appreciate you taking some time to chat this evening. How's everything going, man? Everything's good, brother, man. First and foremost, I just want to thank you, Chris, and uh, for the opportunity to even be on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the pleasure is definitely all mine. It's uh, definitely long overdue. We've been connected for a while, so I'm definitely happy we're uh, finally able to do this. So let's go ahead and get right to it. I just uh, want to start this interview off by asking you a pretty simple question, and that is uh, coming out of high school, and I see that you're from New York, uh, how did you decide to attend Southern Connecticut State University and play for the Owls? Uh, well, this is an interesting story, man. Hopefully it'll be a book or something one day. <laughs> I'm just playing, but um, basically, uh, what happened was uh, I played one year of high school football and kind of found me like just working out in the weight room. And so, um, being that I wasn't really like on people's radar because due to like the fact that your sophomore and your junior year also help you out, I was still getting uh, a few D1 offers, some small uh, D1, some big D1s. I had like Rutgers, Lafayette, Temple, Wagner, Dartmouth, Fordham. There was a, a few uh, Stony Brook. And um, at that time, they were big. They were big carpet on the SATs, like starting to get SAT done. So at this time, I took the SAT three times. But uh, unfortunately, my first two times, they lost the scores, which was like a one in a million chance, like thinking about it. But like they lost the scores twice. And so the third time, I kind of didn't give them my best effort, like due to the fact that I had a very low football IQ and like a recruiting process IQ. And then my mother doesn't know much about the sport. I didn't have anybody in my in my corner at the time or telling me what to do. I kind of was just like, well, but they were going to me prep school, JUCOs. And I was just kind of like, well, I kind of just want to start my just my college life just to get my degree. So at the time, uh, all the D1 schools started declining. And, um, the only D2 schools I had was uh, CW Post and uh, Southern. And um, during this time, they gave me a call. And I was pretty much just getting used to the process. So I was about to tell them. Like, hey, man, I'm pretty, I know my SAT scores might not be high enough for you. And it ended up being uh, the perfect amount, like just on the dot. So that's how I play for Southern. All right, and yeah, so you decided to, you decided to attend Southern Connecticut, and uh, you redshirted your fir- first year there. Now, what was it like to redshirt your first year and then go on to play ten games the next season as a sophomore? Most of the time, it seems like if someone redshirts, you know, they'll play in a few games, you know, three or four games the next year, but uh, not not get as much, uh, not not get too much playing time. But that wasn't the case for you. I mean, you you've seen some uh, you you've seen some pretty decent action, and I believe you you've seen action in all ten games. Yep. I mean, uh, coming in first year, I felt like it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I was I was a big guy my whole life. And um, being there, like, that was my first time playing football. I didn't know the extent to, like, how much you should be training during the summer and how important the off season actually was. So at that time, like, I really came, I came in my freshman year, 356. So, um, so that whole year process, I was kind of just toning up, getting used to the college level speed and just becoming a better play a technique mechanically and just a better athlete in general. So I really appreciated that time. And um, by the time I came back from my retro freshman year, uh, I pretty much had the skill set uh, to start at that level. And now I've been starting ever since. All right, so so you, you said you, you went there th- uh, about 355, 356. Uh, right now, uh, can you give us your current uh, listings? I, I believe last I seen was 62, 315. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. I mean, of course, it fluctuates a pound or two. Uh, at my Giants workout, I was three sixteen. So it, it's usually, I usually maintain around that same. I try not to try to stay three fifteen to three twenty range. 
Alright, all right. so uh, Carly, during your retro freshman year and uh, your sophomore year, you, you combined for uh, 45 tackles, 2.5 sacks, and then as a junior in 2013, you were named all-conference by recording 54 tackles, 10.5 tackles for loss, 3 sacks, and a pass breakup. Uh, that was obviously your breakout season. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out that you were selected all-conference, and what were your expectations for your senior season, knowing that it will be your final go-around at the college level? I mean, uh, I always like uh, I'm a I'm a heavy competitor. I always want the best for myself, and I never usually compare myself to people around me or people who I even look up to. I always try to be the best me that I can be because at the end of the day, that's the only person I can change, and the only thing I can change is myself, not what's going on around me. So um, after my soft, my rest of sophomore year, I suffered an injury that left me out at the end of the season. So I made sure it, it really humbled me up, and also like. It was the best thing to have to. It was like a gift and a curse. Like I, I had to sit out and watch, uh, and watch my team battle. And it's something when you got as much passion as me, it's something that's it's almost like it's really like it just puts you in a different kind of mindset. Like I would rather just go through a lot of things than that. But at that time, it made me realize that nothing's guaranteed and nothing's promised. Not even the next day playing on the field or not. So I made I made a promise that next year, my junior year, I'll be an All American. I'll be on conference. And I, that was the hardest I ever worked. And then once when those happened, my senior year, I don't have to top that. And I, I mean, I didn't know how I was going to top, but I was going to make sure that for my stats, I was trying to just do whatever I had to do to increase them, which is become a better teammate overall. And it certainly looks like you, you uh, definitely uh, achieved your goal, at least from, uh, you know, outside looking in. I mean, it was another huge season for you, Carleaf. I mean, uh, you certainly went out with a bang. Uh, I mean, it's not every day you hear an interior defensive lineman uh, racking up 73 tackles on the season, but that's exactly what you did. Uh, with that being said, how would you describe your overall college football experience at Southern Connecticut State University? It's just, I wouldn't change it for the world. I got to meet some real, real good people world good culture and a world good environment. It was something that just needed to be done. It also kept me uh it kept me humble and motivated enough to want more of myself. I figured I mean I done trained with a lot of people, I've been around a lot of people and one thing I noticed is like a lot of big school guys and just just the way people carry themselves. I mean we see that everywhere. It's like people attitudes and egos is usually the death of them. So it's kinda of like being from a smaller school I never really had that that um, idea of myself of thinking like, well, of course I think highly of myself, but to think that I'm better than anybody, I always just a natural competitor and always just kept my head between my nose to the ground and just never really was able, never was really satisfied enough to be feel that kind of way. So I feel like it was a blessing in disguise. Chris Shanfeld talking with 2015 NFL draft prospect Carleaf Taylor, defensive tackle out of Southern Connecticut. And Carleaf, when I when I mentioned your name along the lines of 2015 NFL draft prospect, I mean, what goes through your mind? I, I got to think that it's always been a dream. But when did you realize that you know playing in the NFL may not only be a dream, but it could become a reality? Was there a specific moment that you could remember? I mean, after the fact that uh, teams literally started calling me and. Uh, showing interest it was just like wow like this is really happening and just different articles and different people and different like a lot of people that I respect like I was able to speak to different I spoke to Simeon Rice before and uh, he had good things to say I got to speak to Sean Smith and just a different all different types of like veterans Hall of Fame and it was just I just got to speak to real and network with real good people and once you get to see a name pop up in certain places it just it just was like a surreal film but also a blessing it just I mean, it's, it's, no, it's no better feeling than creating your own opportunity. I mean, you have the odds against you. A lot of people kind of just fold over. It's better just keep pushing. So, like, I mean, we all have different journeys, but this is a beautiful journey. So it's just kind of like surreal. But we have to take it for what it is because at the end of the day, you did work to get to where you are. Hey, man, you ain't lying about that. Now, uh, obviously, now playing at Southern Connecticut is the Division Two level. Um, now, personally, I'm a big fan of, you know, the D1 AA, the FCS, the D2, D3 football. Uh, there's so much talent that just goes unnoticed, sadly. But, uh, you know, the, if you have talent, scouts will find you. And, obviously, you're seeing that right now. Um, over the last four years, who would you say is the best or most impressive player that you've had to play against? I mean, is there anybody specific that sticks out? Uh, I'll say this in the most humble way. Uh, honestly, no. But um, I remember uh, my redshirt sophomore year. Uh, this 
is like during the season, I got hurt. I only played four games. Uh, we played uh, IUP uh, as a PSAC conference. Mm-hmm. Those uh, the, the team as a unit, just the organization that how they gel together and the chemistry. Really, that was probably like one of the toughest games I ever uh, faced. Just as a as a unit, it was just like they were really sound and really put together. That you you don't see that kind of organization and uh and coaching like on that level. So. That kind of was like a wake-up call for me at the same time. Now, I know a little bit earlier you mentioned that you don't really like to compare yourself to anybody, but uh, is there a defensive lineman currently playing in the NFL that you might compare your game to? I mean, yeah. Like, when I watch people, like, when I say I don't compare myself to anybody, it's like uh, if somebody, okay, let's say for instance, uh, Danny Shelton, we're both no tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because he does this amount of reps or made this amount of plays, I don't, go out and say, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. I just worry about myself. I watch myself and be like, okay, this is what needs to be improved, and this is what I can do to improve that. But when in the league, uh, I watch numerous players. I mean, uh, Jones Wolfork, Pelodi Nata, uh, Phil, uh, Phil Taylor. It's, it's, a, it's a numerous amount of D-line that I watch and that I also like look up to and who I try to mirror, but at the same time be original and still stay me because at the end of the day, you only to be you. Yeah, 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 you ain't lying about that. Now, uh, now, now, you can only be you. Uh, what do you feel is your biggest strength as a defensive lineman? I would say uh, one one thing that has me uh, standing out. I would say either my hands or my motor. Uh, I was just, uh, I was always, I just like to chase things down. I'm big on, I, I never give up on plays. And that's kind of one thing you don't see from the nose usually. If it's a screen play or if it's, let's say a hail mary or anything, like I'm chasing it down. I'm chasing it until it whistle blows, and that's just kind of like how I was coached along the way. But um, so for other people, when I see people talk about it, like it's kind of like the norm to me. But that's one thing that uh, scouts have been talking to me and been telling me that they like is like my motor and my closing speed, how I can get from one end to the field to the next end of the field and still be able to make the play. Absolutely. Once again, Chris Schenfeld talking with 2015 NFL Draft prospect, a defensive tackle, nose tackle out of Southern Connecticut, Carleaf Taylor here on the CS Podcast. And Carleaf, just a few more questions, and then I'll let you go. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, now, let's say there's an yeah, NFL man. general manager listening to this very interview. Uh, if I were to give you some time to sell yourself, why should he want you a part of his team? Because if you get a player like me, you're going to get somebody that's going to give it all they got, whether it's practice, in the game, in the, in the weight room, watching film, like, I, I mean, I can't promise everybody a win because, I mean, you know how the game goes, the team game, but you can't, what, what you can get from me is somebody that's going to give it all, and I'm giving it until my heart stops beating, and that's just how I've been playing ever since I started playing, and anything I do, I'm like, I give them all, I never take a playoff, I never take anything off, I give everything 110% effort, and that's what you'll get from me. Hey, brother, you sound determined, man, you sound hungry, I love it. <laughs> Now, uh, now, Carleaf, has it sunk in yet that you've played in your final college football game, and that the next time you play will be in the pros? I mean, I know we're, you know, we're, we're uh, nine days away from the NFL draft. I know, you know, it's been a long process. Has it sunk in yet? Um, kind of, but not really. It's like, uh, I mean, I like, uh, I would say I'm optimistic, but I'm also a strong believer in faith. And uh, when my final season was over, it was surreal. Like, I will, of course, I will miss that whole facility and the people. But I knew that wouldn't be the end of Carleaf Taylor, so it was just kind of like, it's kind of like how you graduate high school and you know college is coming up next. It was just one of those feelings like, well, I'm on to the next chapter of my life, just a new story, so new beginning. So it was a bit of sweet, like the end of a beginning, if that makes sense. And, of course, I know recently you worked out with the New York Giants. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about that experience and how you feel you performed? Oh, man, uh, that was probably one of the best experiences of my life, if not the best. Um, the Giants facility, the whole infrastructure of the Giants is very welcoming. It was so hospitable, and it just felt like home, man. It really just felt like, and it's, it's crazy because the, the nervousness and the energy you get going into places like that, not knowing what to expect. Like, they were, they were very nice. Everything was presented well. The people were nice. The facility was beautiful. Like, even the training, everything about that whole situation just felt good. It felt, it felt like home. And uh, we did a lot of positioning drills, similar to like uh, for some linemen, similar to bag drills, a lot of hitting, um, a lot of cone drills and stuff. And um, 
Uh, I was um, um, I got to speak to uh, Chris Pett. He's a scout, and uh, he told me uh, he told me some good things, and uh, he's basically we'll keep in touch and um, just make sure I stay in shape, and we'll see what happens um, in the future. You, you said that that uh, the, the Giants facility felt like home. It's kind of funny because you're from New York. Uh, did you grow up a Giants fan at all? Um, so what I mean. My brother was a Jets fan, so I would root on the I would root for the Giants just uh, just to, just to ball them. So it's, I kind of growing up uh, rooting for the Giants at that same time. But if the Jets happen to choose me, then I'm a Jets fan. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm sure you're a fan of all 32 teams right now. <laughs> Hey, that's great to hear. Well, I'm definitely, uh, definitely very happy that that uh, workout seemed to go well. Um, I, I gotta say, Carleef, it's definitely been a pleasure speaking with you. I really do appreciate your time. I'm happy we're finally able to do this. Uh, I'm definitely wishing you nothing but the best throughout this process. Nine days away. I know you can't wait. Uh, do you have anything else for us before I let you go? Um, yeah, I just want to thank you again, man, for the opportunity. It's really a blessing to be on here and just to be around and be in the mix. Uh, I just want to send my prayers and a blessing to everybody that trying to do the same thing I'm doing, whether it's football related or whether it's just tracing your dreams in any way, man. I want me or anybody to be an example that anything is possible if you uh, work your hardest, you can create your opportunity. Hey, true class act, Carleef. Uh, once again, I really do appreciate it. Hopefully we can keep in touch and take care, all right, man? All right, no problem. You too, brother.